how does it feel to be back third time here yeah awesome um so blessed uh this is something that uh i mean personally like me and my family were praying for like i love playing with these guys i love uh playing in the city of philadelphia uh, love obviously playing with carson zach it's crazy i got locker by my boy now too so it's just a good feeling man um when uh when howie and them call man me and my wife were just ecstatic so uh I'm just glad. I couldn't wait for this day because the call came at the beginning of the bye week. So that was a long bye week. I was probably the most anxious to get back to work out of everybody. So but it was good, though. What's the process like, though? Obviously, you're so close with this organization. Mm -hmm. Did you know that they were possibly possibly going to reach out back back out to you? What What is that process like? Yeah, I don't probably won't talk too much about the inner workings of all that. But, um, you know, just some unfortunate things have happened. That's one thing that I never uh, really look at, you know, when when things are going on here, like if I'm not here, I try not to, to watch too much. I always just check on the guys, see how they're doing. But, um, you know, lots of times unfortunate things have happened that have gotten me back to be able to have this opportunity to be here. So, um, but obviously, like you see some of those things go down. I mean, I've always had a good relationship with Howie, good relationship with this team. So, um, you kind of hope the call comes then when it does, like, all right, it's time to go. So, I was excited. You're coming into a situation that needs immediate production. How yeah. prepared are you to step right in? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's been that way every single time. I feel like when I, when I got drafted to here, that was one thing that, hey, we need production from the receiver position. Came in, work hard, play. Uh, and then even uh, last year, I mean, I was here a year ago at this time. It feels weird. It feels like it's been a long time, but it really has, hasn't been. And that was the same thing, you know. It's like, come on, like, we need you to come in. Uh, immediately produce and I mean that's just what I do when opportunities are there you know I just try and work hard and go out there and make the play so uh, the moment's not too big for me I just go out there and play. Do you just immediately pick up where you left off with Carson? Yeah yeah pretty much so it's all good um, the uh, the the chemistry's there uh, obviously we're always talking throughout the season so like I said there's not much of that you know process of acclimating you know like every other place that I've gone it feels like there's a good two to three weeks you, you don't even know where the bathroom is, but um, I was able to come back here and it's just like back at home and see everybody. What's up? What's up? Back to work. Obviously, in this situation, like people are looking at you to replace Deshaun because mm -hmm. you know he's probably out for the year, but you guys are very different. I mean, yeah, will that be very tough. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I think uh, I just play my game. Um, Deshaun, uh, man, I had a fun time watching that first game. I mean, God, he's special. Um, so. So I know that uh, he's definitely going to be missed during this time. Obviously, I know that uh, we expect him back, but we got to win some games to get him back, and I think that's the goal. Uh, but right now, I'm just focusing on what we got to do this week versus Patriots. So that's as far as I'm looking. Uh, the off day tomorrow, recover, and then Wednesday practice, we got to get after it. So what do you make of the twists and turns that your career has taken? Yeah. How do you sort it all out? What do you uh, I mean, I, I kind of just always uh, stay focused on the process. I feel like, uh, you know, I, I look at it like it's a relationship. I look at a relationship with ball like it is with my wife. You know, somebody says, hey, are you ready to be married for the next 80 years? Like, whoa, that's scary. But I tell you what, she's my best friend every day. And I just look every single day, be a good husband, be a good husband. And then the rest of the 80 are going to take care of itself. So I look at it the same way with ball. You know, people always say, oh, like, how do you feel about how this camp's going to go? So I don't know by now how this practice is going to go. I'm going to go out here and work my butt off and go make some plays. And I feel like I've been able to do that. I mean, um, and, and every single time I've gone places where I knew it was going to be hard. You know, um, I had an opportunity to go to teams that were like, hey, you come here, you're going to start. I never want to go in those situations. I want to go places where it was going to be hard, where it was going to be difficult, and where it was going to stretch me. And so I felt like I came back to here as a better player last year, more uh, smarter, uh, more focused, and I feel like that same thing coming back this time. So um, I look at it like it's a journey, man. I'm having a good time on it, too. I feel great, uh, best I've felt in a long time. So uh, I'm just ready to go. What's just been your like, perspective on the Eagles offense watching from the outside from the last yeah. couple weeks? Um, I, I tell you what, they're, they're starting to pick it up. That's the cool thing. That was two big wins uh, going into the bye week. Um, and I think uh, just everybody's kind of getting going. There's a lot of guys getting healthy, too. And so I think that's a big thing. But obviously, at the receiver position, we just got to go out there and, and make the plays that need to be made. You said you try not to pay attention when you're not here, but it seems like you were a little bit at least. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm more so talk to the guys. I'll call them. I don't. I'm so serious. I don't watch the full games just because if I'm not here, more so, I, I like to treat them like they're my boys. You know, I like to call them like they're people. Now, like, oh, let me go watch and enjoy a football game. You know, I'm trying to say, hey, are you good, healthy, checking on Zach, Carson, everything. So I kind of see the whole picture and then just kind of make sure they're all doing good. So. You, you mentioned, mentioned that last year, Jordan, you had more chunk plays than yeah. the first time you were 15 yards per catch. Do you right. think your game 
grew? Was it kind of a different spot in the offense? How would you? No, it's, it's grew. It grew, and it's definitely uh, it's growing. You know, I think every single year I'm finding new ways uh, to add uh, some stuff to my to, to my game and stuff. I think my best years are ahead of me, and so um, so that's pretty much the main thing. Like I said, when I came back, you know, that time at the Patriots was invaluable, and then obviously, you know, you see the success the 49ers are having. Like I learned a lot from Wes Welker. Obviously, I had Miles out there, so just taking some of those coaching points. I was running with a lot of young guys too, man. Like. You try to keep up with Marquis good when you're going to get better. You're going to get faster, you know. And so uh, I just took a lot of stuff that I was learning, uh, guys I was competing with, was trying to apply it here. Sherm uh, helped me out a ton with my game. So, yeah, I feel like I'm getting better. I'm just ready to go cut it loose. You're, you're faster? Uh, you were pretty... Yeah, I am. Yeah. When you were first, the first day here, you were almost like the, the veteran leader in, 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 right. in, that, in that room. Mm -hmm. uh, it's changed a little bit. You came in last year, mid-season, mm -hmm. did the same thing again. But what can you offer in terms of your experience and your voice? Um, I think right now the biggest thing I got to offer is just go out there and make those plays, man. You know, I felt um, when I came back last time, you know, I always had that respect of the guys in the room. But until I scored in Nashville, that's when I felt like, okay, we're back. And I feel like that's the way football is and that's how it's supposed to be. You can't just walk in and expect, like, oh, respect me because of stuff I did in the past. Like, that junk don't matter. It's about what you do now. And so um, I just want to go out there. Uh, make a few plays, you're able to get some good stuff today in practice and just keep going, keep building, keep building, and go out there and be consistent on Sunday. And I feel like that's going to, you know, elevate the respect in the room. And then that's when I can start, like, touching guys, like, hey, like, let's work on this. Or, hey, this is why I've seen your game. Let's let's try and get better at this. And I feel like that's when you can start, you know, being that leader again. But more than anything, I'm trying to lead by example. I know you said you haven't been watching a lot, right? but I'm sure, I'm sure it's hard for you not to hear the perception of how the receivers have performed prior to your arrival. Yeah. Um, you know, what do you make of, of that group and how, and how it's gone here? Yeah, like I said, and I got to – I think, obviously, I'm playing the receiver position. I know there's a lot of things that go into – you know, good games and production. So I don't really like to just focus on like the articles, even though I know you guys are doing a great job. Uh, I just don't kind of worry about that stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to watch guys practice. We're going to go out there. We're going to work and I'll assess the situation as we go. But more than anything, I got to handle my junk, go out there and make plays. And I feel like that'll elevate the room. I feel like Nelson had a great practice today. Uh, he's focused coming off the bus. So I'm excited to get out here and get going. Jordan, when it, when it became real uh, that you were returning, yeah. what was the uh, the conversation with Carson like? Was it text, phone, uh, and you know, what was the communication? Oh, man. Um, dude, it was uh, like, I mean, honestly, I probably, I almost, I, it was so crazy because I would just, I just feel like this was kind of unprecedented. I knew, I've heard of guys like going back to a team that drafted them once, but twice. You know, it was just crazy. I mean, I was texting all the guys, like, guys, like, it's, it's happening, it's happening. And that was like a kid in a candy store. I Man, I was like getting drafted all over again. So um, I was just so happy. Um, I can't even explain it. Picked up my son, ran him around the house like he was Simba, you know. So it was a, it was a good feeling, man. Uh, my wife knew that this is some, this is where I want to be. And so uh, she was just uh, so happy for me. Uh, she's still in uh, California, though. She wasn't going to miss a chance to go to Napa this weekend. So, <laughs> But she'll be back soon. She'll be back in Philly with this good weather. So I'm excited to have them both here. Yeah, what do you do when you keep going back and forth? You just, like, keep an apartment here or something like that? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I think we used to it. Go ahead, bro. Uh, with other stops in between, what was it you missed most about Philadelphia and the Oh, man. Oh, um, man. Dude, just the, the camaraderie is, I mean, it's its unmatched. I mean, because when you're drafted here, like, you don't know much. And you get around guys like Sproles, and you start seeing how he practices. And then a guy like him coming and taking him under your wing, JP, uh, Lane, you know, obviously my relationship with Zach, Carson, like, just those relationships, you can't just find those everywhere. And you can't manufacture them, too. You can't walk into a locker room and think, okay, I'm going to expedite this process and get cool with people in, you know, a couple months. I did. I was able to do that on the last couple of teams I've been on. But here it's just like it's just so organic, so natural. Um, I talked to these guys about things that, all, that have nothing to do with football. You know, I'm, I was in uh, Carson's wedding. Like, there's things that I've done and time I've spent with these guys that just I haven't done everywhere else. So just being back around family and uh, going to work with these guys, like I'll die on a hill for these guys. And so that's the best part about it. What's the biggest thing you've learned about the league? What's the biggest thing you've learned about the league in your first half here? Uh, you got to take care of your body. You got to take care of your body. Uh, the best availability is being available. So, by week help you, you think? Hmm? Refresh? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I feel good. Uh, ready. Uh, it's about to get cold, though, but... <laughs> 
I'm about to <laughs> trying to get on this this uh this winning stretch and uh make a run for the playoffs. How'd you What'd you do everybody? Bye? How'd you spend the bye week? I just relaxed, you know, I was at, at home in my hometown, Pittsburgh, uh chill with my family, uh did some some workouts to stay in shape, uh but I just just relax for for Do you anything fun? Nah, not really. <laughs> nah, I really didn't. I was just chilling. I mean a lot of these guys, most of the guys in here have played, let's say, the Patriots before, especially two years ago, obviously a memorable game. You you have memories of them? I mean, obviously they were dominant team when you were growing up. Oh uh, yeah. I mean I'm a, I was I grew up a Steelers fan, so they yeah, they stressed me out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with Tom Brady being there the whole time, but yeah, uh, I know a lot about him. I mean, that's the Steelers' kryptonite right now. Right now, but um, yeah, they're a good team, uh, good coaching. Uh, but like I said, as long as we handle what we got handled this week and come swinging on Sunday, then we should be straight. So you can get personal revenge for all those games you watched as a kid. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> you Obviously, your family about that about beating the Patriots this coming week. Uh, yeah, my mom. My mom already knows. She's like. Got beat on. Got, be, got to. Got to. Hey, hey Miles, you talk about taking care of your body. This is a time of year when a lot of rookies kind of hit that wall because they're used to the season ending in November. What do you do to make sure December, maybe January, you're fresh? Um, like like I said, in the bye week, I was, I was just making sure I stayed in shape because we, we had a, a fast-paced practice today to make sure everybody's back to where we were before the bye week. So. Um, like, I'm just doing little stuff, just taking care of my body. I'm staying in a cold tub, hot tub, all that. Massages, staying on top of that. Any, like, soft tissue uh, things that I got going on, I make sure I get worked on that, too. So, but, um, yeah, so I think I've been doing a good job right now. Um, my mental is in the right place and just ready to keep balling. With Deshaun out, I mean, the offense needs a little infusion of, of something in the wide receiver groups. How much do you know about Jordan Matthews? Jordan Matthews. I, I don't know too much. Uh, I met him, I uh, introduced myself to him on the field and stuff, but I know he was here on the Super Bowl team, right? Uh, but that's all about, that's all I know right now, but I'm gonna keep talking to him. He seemed cool. Do you guys need, realize that, you know, for the, the stretch run here, the running backs are gonna be key, especially given Deshaun's injury? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna go behind those big guys up front and they go, they're gonna dominate the last scrimmage each week. I don't have no doubt about that, so. And we're going to go off of what they give us. And you catch, you, you'll be catching some passes, right? Yeah, something like that, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> let's keep doing what I'm doing. JJ, do you feel like that this is an opportunity for you to sort of come of age as a rookie and take what you've learned these first nine weeks and apply them here in the second half of the season? Yeah, I mean, you know, like you said, second half of the season was happening in the past. It doesn't matter anymore, you know. Now, day by day, week by week, it's getting better every chance you get. What was it like to get away for a few days? I mean, I really didn't get away. I stayed here, you okay. know. Just wanted to make sure that, you know, mentally, physically, everything, that I'm still ready to go. Um, and, you know, we're in season. So I feel like it ain't really no time for breaks. You know, if anything, it's time to push more. So what did you do over the weekend then? I hung out here, hung out in here. Um, you know, had my pops come up, but for the most part, just chilled and got my mind and body right. Did you reflect at all on what the whirlwind has been like for you from the time you were drafted in the second round to this point in the year? Yeah, I mean, you know, I honestly believe, like, that, you know, this has obviously been a roller coaster, but at the same time, like, you know, anybody that goes through kind of what I've gone through, you're going to become a, you see, going to break you as you become a better man, and it hasn't broken me. So um, definitely become a better man, better man from it, better player. And uh, now it's just every opportunity that I get, I got to make the most of it. Where's that strength come from? I mean, you know, everything, everybody's faced difficulties in life. It's just a matter of how you handle those adversities. And everything that I've kind of gone through in life has made me a better person and better man. And instead of letting it affect me and break me, I've let it fix me and, you know, learn from it. Um, and it ain't, it ain't nothing different now. So, you know, now it's just, like I said, take advantage of every opportunity and learn from mistakes and keep getting better. This Patriots secondary, I mean, the defense as a whole has been pretty good this season, but when you look at New England's secondary, you know, Lewitt McCourty there, the one corner spot, Gilmore at the other, pretty, pretty tough uh, duo to contend with there. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're good players. Uh, good defense, solid team. Um, we got good players and we're a solid team as well, so it should be fun. Are you looking forward to seeing what the coaches may have maybe schemed during the bye week to help for you guys to, you know, create some more opportunities for you guys? 
I mean, yeah, you know, you, I, we have, I firmly believe we have some of the best coaches out there. So, you know, whatever they have schemed up, whatever they, they're going to draw up and, you know, however they're going to put us in position to make plays, uh, it's going to happen and we just got to make them. Did you watch the, the game last night? Um, a little bit. I was actually flying um, from Minnesota here, so I didn't catch the whole thing, but I saw the ending. So what were the emotions of those last couple of days last week for you, going from big wave to being mm -hmm. playing right away by the Eagles? Um, at first I was a little shocked, but you know, just after being claimed, I'm, I was pretty excited. You know, I felt like I had a good opportunity here, you know, coming to a great city, a great organization. So, you know, the excitement just continued to build, and you know, I'm just ready to get to work. Was it nice to have kind of the, a few days off to kind of compartmentalize the, the move as well? Just with yeah, the bye week? definitely. That definitely uh, helped out a lot having that bye week. You know, being able to just chill for a couple of days. You know. Um, wrap my mind around everything and, and you know, just set my mindset for for the future moving forward. So that definitely helped out a lot. And you arrived, just to clarify, you arrived in Philly today? Yeah. Or last, uh, night? last night, yeah. What's the process now like, learning the calls and the playbook and everything for you? Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna meet with the coaches extra, do whatever I have to do, um, you know, just make sure I'm staying in my playbook, studying, trying to make sure I learn the playbook and, you know, the special teams as well as fast as I can. The Eagles seem to show a lot of interest in you prior to the draft. Did you think that Philadelphia would be a place that you could uh, be calling home? Yeah, definitely. You know, they showed some interest um, in the pre-draft process, and then you know, once I got waived by the Vikings, they they immediately called uh, my agent a few times. So you know, I knew that this was a possibility, and you know, I'm glad it worked out the way it did. Were you talking to Unlin when in that call? You said the coach was on the phone with you, or do you know? Uh, it was Coach Tim. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, cool. You, start, you started your career as a walk-on at Wyoming. Yes, so is this sort of like nothing new for you or nothing's being given to you that you've just got to you know, start your way from the bottom of the totem pole, the ladder, so to speak, and work your way back up? Yeah, definitely. My, my football journey has definitely always been you know, an uphill battle. Um, but you know, I've, I've embraced that. I've always just put my head down and grinded as hard as I could to get where I am. So you know, I just plan on continuing to do that going forward. I would say uh, the use of his hands and protection is, is really, uh, uh, when you watch him, how tight his hands are and how he, he's able to really firm up in the protection and keep people from pushing the pocket. Um, he's using different tools that we've taught him in terms of uh, uh, set lines, different types of approaches we're using. Uh, and he's embraced all that stuff. He loves football. He loves the whole concept of uh, uh, tools in his toolbox. and. Um, so I think he's just surfacing blocks. I can go on and on. I could sit here for an hour and talk to you about, you ask me what, and I'm not joking when I say that, he's improved in every category. Is it unusual for a guy at that, at that stage of his career to see this level, th this degree of improvement? Are, you know, the old dogs, new tricks kind of thing. Some, kind, some guys are set in their ways, but I guess some guys can, uh, can continue to develop. I, I can't elaborate on that, but I can just say that from his stamp, from the standpoint of Brandon and him embracing me as his coach and the other players that are in that meeting room and the guys that are around him, I think all those are factors why he's... He's doing so well. What's something you learned about him that you didn't know before he got here? What an athlete. He's such a, I mean, he's such a big man, but you don't realize what a great athlete he is. He's very light on his feet. He's an extremely athletic individual. A four-year contract extension brings him into, you know, years 10, 11, 12 in his career. How do you think his game will age? Um, like I said, I think he's just an incredible athlete. I, I don't see, I, I, in the way he, the way he approaches yeah. everything, he, he's such a uh, goal-oriented type of guy. I, I, th I only see him get better every year, to be honest with you. Is there any context you can provide about how well he's grading out for you guys? On whose grading scale? On yours. <laughs> on my grading yeah. scale. Extremely high every week. Mm -hmm. Consistent, like that, every week. And because because he's he's uh, he's playing it one play at a time. You know, he's not looking ahead. He's not looking behind. He's just focusing on what he's doing at that moment, and then he moves on from there. I think most of our players do that. Is that is that something he's gotten better at as well? The the yes. mental aspect yes. of it. Yes, I think he's improved. I guess if you asked him, I think from the time I watched him on film and when he was in uh, Houston. Uh, 
I see a locked in guy. I see a guy who's just like just zoned in on what he's doing from each play. And I'm very, very happy with, with the, his production, his level of, uh, uh, I say, his level of execution and all, the, and all the technique that we're teaching him. He applies it all. He's a smart man. You, uh, yeah, you, you used uh, Jason. Just quick time update. We have about six minutes here in the Scotland meeting. So. You used uh, Jason Peters as a template for other players. Are you using him as a template for other players? You have a lot of young offensive linemen, interior linemen. Are you using what Brandon does as an example for for uh, other young guards, other, other young players? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that uh, every, but, but each player is different. Like for certain players that would match his type of game, yes. Uh, some other guys, uh, Isaac is, is an example. I mean, Isaac's extremely athletic in his own right. I mean, he's just an extremely athletic guy. I mean, there were different types of players, but but I use I use a guy whenever whenever I can use uh, a player's uh, technique um, to match someone else that's similar in style. I do that all the time. How Brandon has Andre uh, uh, improved since taking over from JP? Each week he's getting better. Each week he's gotten better, and I think the I think the. The communication between he and Isaac has been excellent. I think those guys have done a great job. And I, and I guess the best way to say, to, to, to like demonstrate that point would be whenever you get into third down situations and players are running um, multiple twist stunts and those kinds of things, you see Andre and, and Isaac, they're on the same, I mean, those guys are on the same level now. They're, they're, they're snapping those things off pretty quick at a high level. What do, you know Brandon, about Andre, what do you know about Andre now that you didn't know before he got a chance to play this year? Maybe Phil Daniels is up here. Pretty much everything that I knew going into the draft, I think, is exactly right on the button. Uh, are, are, Brandon, you, are, you are you expecting JP back this week? And, and you know, one of the things Doug said to us last week was that you know, once he is ready to come back, that he would go back to being the starter over Andre. So. Too. Oh, I think that if you walked into our meeting room right now, I'm not in the room. The players are in the room. You say, hey, I mean, Jason Peters is unbelievable. Yeah. And since I've been here, since 2013, all I've ever heard is, ah, oh, he's too old. He can't do it. He's not going to make it. And he's proved everybody wrong every single year, every single year. This is an unbelievable. You might never see another Jason Peters again. I'm being honest with you now. This man is, a, is an absolute uh, – incredible, incredible player who still shows before he got hurt, okay, and he actually played a little bit while he was hurt, playing at an extremely high level. Now that he got that thing taken care of, I expect him to be back playing at even a better level. And so I'm excited about that. When is that time? I don't know. Some of that show up when he, when he does check to a play, or is it strictly if you see this, do this, or is there some of it, is there some leeway for his football intelligence? To there's, there's certainly times where he and Kelsey may communicate something, and usually that would come within a, in between series. They'll come off the side, hey, if we get this, what do you want to do with this? And then they'll kind of work through that with Stout, Coach Peterson, Coach Grow, um, and kind of come up with the best answer. But a lot of times there's a, there's a nice tight parameters within a play, and they know we're going, if we get this front, we're going to go to this look, whatever it may be. So, Press, how, how much did you learn during this week at this self scout week, and what do you take from it? I think it's always nice just to kind of, with this bye week, just kind of come up for air for a second, kind of really look back and, okay, here's where we are personnel wise, scheme wise, um, you know, here's where the landscape of the league, things we do well that maybe early on in training camp you expect it to be one way, and then each week it continues to change as it goes. Now you get a chance to kind of settle down for a second and look back and say, you know, we've done a good, we really thought this would be a successful scheme for us. As we go forward, maybe we're a little bit right here is where we're going to be better at moving forward. And again, it comes down to the opponents you play, but also putting your guys in a situation to do things that they do at a high level. It's been an odd year for Nate uh, being the presumed number two, and then Josh comes in. How has he handled everything this year? He's done a great job. I mean, like we talked about with Carson, the, the ultimate goal in our room is for everybody to get better. Myself included. We want every single thing. We want, uh, you know, Monday of this week to be better than the Monday of last week, to be better than Sunday, yesterday, whatever. So I think Nate does a good job of keeping uh, kind of his wits about him and continuing to approach this thing as really with the just get better mentality. Is it pure experience that makes McCown the number two? Or is there certain things you think he does better at this point that Nate needs to work on? I think it was just kind of a situation where 
in a position where we can continue to let Nate get as healthy as possible coming off the injury. So right now we weren't in a position to have to make any changes. Mm -hmm. And so we just continue to let Nate continue to get as healthy as he can.